incredible the effect it was having on my mental health and my ability to deal with stress and anxiety. So in many ways, I'm in the sauna, not just because I enjoy it, but because I'm also banking a little bit on, hey, I want to get some benefit to my brain. Anything that improves cardiovascular health is going to improve brain health. But there's another aspect to the story here, and that has to do with the heat shock protein response. If you're in like 163 degree Fahrenheit sauna for 30 minutes, we know that heat shock proteins increase about uh, 50% over baseline. People with major depressive disorder were exposed to this this you know, device where they're heating heating up their core body temperature by about two degrees. And they had an antidepressant effect that lasted six months compared to a sham control, which was also heating people up, but not. Single treatment? Single treatment. The heat shock proteins, what they do is they prevent proteins from misfolding and forming aggregates, right? Well, it turns out the heat shock proteins stay active for a long time. And so they end up having this like effect where you're now just improving the folding of proteins in general, even after you're out of the hot sauna, right? Dementia and Alzheimer's disease risk is 66% lower in people that are using the sauna four to seven times per week versus just one time a week. Of course, all and that was at 179 degrees or greater for 20 minutes or greater, right? Yeah, like 175 or 179 exactly for 20 minutes. Are all the benefits you're talking about, which all seem to come from studies in dry sauna, are they also applicable to, to infrared saunas? 